Wonderful. For those of you who have uh, come in to join, what will be a wonderful, wonderful moment with Margaret Jackson. Uh, we thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be a part of this moment. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Working Solutions and what we do uh, in just a moment, but I want to give you some really interesting facts about Black Business Month, all right? Maybe you think Black Business Month really isn't a thing, but it is a thing. And let me tell you exactly what that is. Um, so again, officially welcome to Working Solutions CDFI and our salute to Black Business Month. Uh, as noted by nationaltoday.com, Black Business Month is celebrated in August. It's time to acknowledge and appreciate Black-owned businesses across the nation and all that they represent in the country's continual striving for diversity and equity. The history of Black Business Month can be traced back to the year 2004, when engineering entrepreneur Frederick E. Jordan partnered with the president and executive editor of the scholarly publishing company E-Access Corp, John William Templeton, to start this annual event, Black History Month. The intention of the duo was to drive the policy agenda affecting 2.6 million African-American businesses in order to highlight and empower Black business owners all over. This initiative stemmed from Jordan's own personal experience of the struggle to gain financial backing and funding when he began his own firm in San Francisco in 1969. Today, Mr. Jordan is the successful owner of F.E. Jordan Associates, Inc., a company that not only has national but international reach. Even with his success, Jordan realizes the odds are still not in favor of Black entrepreneurship, but better. To push for equity in business spaces and to celebrate those who are thriving despite the challenges, Black Business Month is a month-long celebration of entrepreneurs who beat the odds. Welcome again to our recognition, our salute to Black Business Month. That's why we're all here today. And now for a little bit about Working Solutions, I'm just going to kind of briefly touch on uh, what we are as an organization, why we're here and what we do. And uh, if we can present that slideshow, that'd be great. So we are Working Solutions CDFI, and our mantra is we're the first to believe in small business. Just a quick overview. We are a small business lender and our loan or funding terms start at 5,000, they max at 100,000. We're a mission driven nonprofit specializing in microloans. And those are startups, startup, excuse me, and early stage businesses. We offer free business consulting we serve 19 counties, and I'm really glad that we're going to be expanding here shortly in the month of October. And we are a certified CDFI, and that is a community development financial institution. Thank you. And so our all-time impact, uh, we've been able to deploy 53 million in loans and grants, 50,000 plus in technical assistance hours, funded 2,900 businesses. Our average loan amount is 29,000 and we have a repayment rate of 95%. And so if you asked us what is, what is, what is our reach? Our niche um, is early stage businesses and startups. And um, our minority focus or a focus if you will is low income women and entrepreneurs of color. And so our service area, as I mentioned a moment ago, we reach 19 counties, but we are expanding statewide in October uh, 24. And we're really excited about that because we've helped so many small business owners and um, we're glad that our reach will enable us to help more. And so our product offering is capital and consulting, small business loans, microloans and grants, and then we have technical 
as well as post-loan business consulting. And listen, our endeavor is not just to uh, fund a small business owner. We want to be able to give you some information and education in order for you to not only survive, but thrive. And so in, just to reiterate, um, our loan products start at 5,000. We max at 100,000, two loan terms, three or five years. Our interest rates are from nine to 11% and those rates are fixed. There is an application fee and a 5% closing fee on the loan amounts. Like with most lenders, there is a personal guarantee required, but there's no minimum credit score, no minimum business revenue, no collateral, and no prepayment penalties. That's not bad at all. And so again, with our consulting, there's pre-loan consulting, financial education and application assistance, post-loan, and that means you have exclusive access to our digital library of self-paced tools, one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions, and connections to partner resources. Those are the things that are gonna help you thrive to be very successful, and that's what we want for you. And then our consulting program focuses on money, management, and marketing. And so if you were to apply with us, there's a simple loan inquiry form. It should take about five to seven minutes to complete. It just kind of introduces you to us. And then there's this full application, which should take somewhere around 40 to maybe 60 minutes. And then you're going to complete and submit your documents. We're going to review it. And if all goes well, we go to funding. And that funding goes directly to your business bank account. And so if you want to learn more about Working Solutions, you can uh, just snap that QR code. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. There is our website to learn more about us, and we encourage you to do that. And our email, should you want to reach out to us or phone us. We are here for you. Thanks so much. And now, and now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, the woman of the hour. If you don't know her, you will in just a minute. She has an extensive bio, but I'm gonna give you a snapshot. And even all that I share with you today isn't all of who she is. Marco Jackson is a highly sought after leader in the Silicon Valley Bay area, having a unique media blend of small business radio personality and small business concierge magazine publisher. She's a very busy woman. Her distinct perspective, coupled with her extensive experience, has made her Silicon Valley's number one small business radio personality on AM 1220 KDOW Business and Finance Radio. Her show, Business on the Edge, reaches over 7.75 million plus listeners across the nine Bay Area counties and live streams on iHeartRadio. Her show is the fourth largest radio market in the country. In 2011, Margaret made history as the first female African-American personality to broadcast during the week on the Salem Media Group Network. Margaret Jackson is an MBA 4.0 graduate of Capella University and has gleaned several distinguished commendations such as the National Society of Leadership and Success Delta Mu Delta Honor Society and the International Honor Society and Business Z Delta Chapter. She was named one of the 100 Silicon Valley Women of Influence for 2020. As the CEO and President of the Small Business Concierge Communications and Digital Media Corporation, Marga Jackson brings over 35 years of invaluable experience to the table. Her role as a regional advisor for the NorCal Inclusivity Project, SBDC, focusing on African-American business, further demonstrates her commitment to the community. Margaret Jackson is highly experienced in grant writing and business planning. She's also a skilled marketing communications professional, public relations advisor, and strategist, adept in small business development. Ms. Jackson is a thriving small businesswoman 
who promotes healthy commerce between small businesses and the global community. She helps to create a level playing field for women and minorities that boosts their competitive advantage. Of her list of accomplishments, accolades, and recognition, Margaret cherishes most being a loving wife and proud mom. Good afternoon, Margaret, and welcome to Working Solutions and our theme, It's My Business. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, Anita. I, I, I was listening to the snapshot, and I'm like, that's quite a snapshot. So thank you so much for the warm and fantastic uh, introduction and, and all of the levels of media. So I'm listening to the inflections in your voice and your delivery. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I'm certainly on it. Thank you very much for that compliment. Again, before we get started here for all of you who have joined and all of the fans of Margaret Jackson, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. We certainly appreciate your presence. So Ms. Jackson, beyond what I've noted in the snapshot of your bio, what else would you like the audience to know about you, Margaret Jackson? You know, it's it's hard to, you know, give accolades to your to yourself. And if I were going to mention one thing about me that I would want you to know, and this audience to know, and the world to know, um, I don't I don't stick my head in a in a room somewhere or in a closet somewhere. But uh, I'm a woman of faith, and um, I would be remiss to not mention that because it is why I'm here today. So if there's one thing that I would want you to know, that is what I would want you to know. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So let me start. Ms. Jackson, what drew you to media as an interest and then as an entrepreneur? You know, I wish I could say that's a short story. So I'm gonna to try to, as, as I prepare for this, and and I and I am thinking about um, what I could deliver today, and this is such a fantastic question. And so, when you're preparing for for something like this, and people want to interview you, you think about what you've done in your past, what you have, what you're doing now, and what you intend to do. And my world really started in media when I decided to go to college. I was a late bloomer. I started college later at 21 years old, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And so I was taking basic courses and classes and I was on Pell Grant and I was 21 years old. So I was on Pell Grant and, and just to crystallize a story for you. And, and you mentioned my being an MBA 4.0, that meant something to me. I, I did that for, for a reason. I grew up being told that I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't, you know, family members, I, you know, sometimes our, our, I had a grandmother who just would say things and, and because they didn't know any better, you know, and so I didn't know that I could really be educated. And so education is really important to me. And so when I decided to go to college, um, I went at 21 years old and, and, and I was, in this place where, you know, when you have Pell Grant, you you have certain requirements that you have to adhere to. And I was really late. I was working. I, I've been working since I was 11 years old. So I was used to working and going to school and all of that. And so I was really kind of late on getting getting my classes in order. And so nothing great that you would want to take. Everything was taken. And I came across this course called Communications, Arts, and Sciences. I'm going to turn my fan on here. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Communication, Arts, and Sciences. And I began to read, and, and I did have a declaration. I was I was declared as a theater major, but I liked it, wasn't in love with it. It was a family kind of thing that that was part of my upbringing. And, and so I thought, okay, I'll do that. But I actually began to read about the back end of media, the back end of production. And I just fell in love with it right there, sitting in the college. I was flipping through, some of you guys may not be old enough, but we had catalogs. And I was flipping through the catalog, the college catalog to see what could I take to meet my Pell Grant requirement. 
and get in. And so I, um, the classes were closed. I had to go knock on the instructor's door. Remember, I had to go knock on the doors and get a signature and all of that. I went to the, this is a really great story. There's going to be a great point for this for you guys. I went to the first instructor. I knocked on the door and I asked him, could I be in this class? I really wanted to be in this class. And he proceeded to just rip me a whole new identity. He tore me up from limb to limb. You should have registered on time. You should, he just blew me up. And, and that's the type of response that could break a person that could really make you, especially a young person, could make you feel like, you know, I'm just, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. And you begin to double, you know, check yourself and question yourself. And so I, I pulled myself together. And because I fell in love, I said, okay, I'm going to go to the, <laughs> I'm going to go to the next door. And I knocked on the door and the instructor comes to the door and she opens it and I beg her. Sometimes I'm not too proud to beg, okay? I begged her, I said, I've got to be in this class. I've got to be in this class. And, and she listened to me sit there and beg and she looked at me warmly and she just said, come on in. And that changed my life. It changed the direction of my life for the first time I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And in fact, we are still connected today. I still have that same, the, the book for the class, I still have that to this day. And so, you know, make sure that, that when opportunities come, they don't always look the way you expect them to look. And sometimes you're going to get a hard no. You're going to get someone that, that's going to make it, you're going to get that, that verbal lashing. You're going to get that. And, and that's not the first time I've gotten a verbal lashing in my career, in my life, I got it when I, and Nita, you'll appreciate this. I got it the first time I went to get a small business loan. I I, I researched 12 different banks. This is in the early uh, 2000s. Uh, yes. And the first bank just ripped me up, ripped me up, ripped up my business plan. Just really, just, just a person who just didn't, just didn't care what he was doing. It was, it was like being in a man's locker room, okay? So imagine the talk. And my executive assistant and I walked out of that bank. This is for an SBAA loan. Just told me I wasn't going to get it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Be careful of what people tell you because you're going to have roadblocks. You're going to have challenges that's going to challenge. What are you going to do with what you just heard? And as Black women, sometimes we, we start rolling our heads and doing all kinds of stuff. But you have to be the CEO in the room. You have to be the CEO in the boardroom. And so he said what he had to say. I took my business plan and my executive assistant who went with me and we sat in the car, we were fuming. <laughs> and I said, we are not going to stop here. We're going to go to every single bank that we, we did our research on. I did my research on, and we ended up getting a quarter of a million dollars, almost a quarter of a million dollars in funding for my business to, to move that product. I was had a production company at the time to move that production company forward. So sometimes your first knock may not be the right knock, but just keep on walking and keep on knocking. And so that, and, and hopefully that ties in a little bit in the entrepreneurship. I got into entrepreneurship um, after losing a job. And um but I, but I had an entrepreneurial spirit. I wanted to do production. I was working production. And so all of that just kind of tied together for me. And so I landed in entrepreneurship in February, 2001. Well, I really appreciate your tenacity because, I mean, I think if you look back, that's, you know, that's one of the things that's going to sustain a business owner. You got to be tenacious. And what I appreciate that you thought enough about yourself, no matter how much it hurt, you thought enough about yourself and your vision, your dream to ask again. So I salute you for that. Yes, yes. Ask you as a media professional then, how and why was your passion 
um, for inspiring Black business women, how was it derived? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, first of all, first and foremost, I'm African American. So I'm going to be for me. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. You have to be for you. The struggle is real. I don't have to tell you that. The struggle started when you were born in, in this country. And, and I'm an American. I love being an American. Okay, I love where I was born and where I'm at. I don't I don't like the the historical story, but but that's real for us. The struggle is real. And what I love is that black women are leading the nation in in starting businesses, getting into business and going after more. And we tend to get it into social kind of social services and, and things like that. But we're seeing other industries now popping up, you know, and when COVID hit a lot of our small businesses, we got hit hard, lost 41% of our black businesses in the country. And so it was really, really difficult because we were, a lot of us were in businesses that could not be deemed as essential. Let me just be clear. You're essential. Someone else's definition of who you are and what you're doing doesn't make you non-essential. You are essential. And so you have to make sure that, and I love what Anita said earlier, is that they don't want to give you funding to just get funding because you can get funding and it'll put you out of business. I'm not playing. You can get it and you can you can write a great business plan and it things things don't always go the way that you plan and you could end up out of business. And guess what? Working Solutions going to want their money back. Okay? And so we have to not just survive you have to thrive and you have to prepare and you have to be methodical. I have thought about it says, okay, I think I'd like to be around about 120 years. What am I going to do with the next 61 years of my life? I'm knocking on, on 60. I'll catch up with 60 next year. But what do I want to do and how do I want that, that to look? I want to be healthy. Okay. And so billionaires, if you study billionaires, billionaires are doing some specific things every day. One of the things they're doing every day is they're trying to not die. Literally, if you study it, you're gonna find it, that they, they are trying to live as long as they can. They, they are thinking about longevity, legacy businesses. We gotta think legacy. We gotta think we can be a Fortune 1000 company. We're seeing more black business, black professionals, entrepreneurs, Rihanna, and uh, I think we just saw that, um, I want to say it's um, Magic Johnson, who just became, uh, just ended up on the billionaires list. I've been watching him and thinking he's going to be on the billionaires list. I think Shaq's going to make the billionaires list. And so we have to not just do that, but we have to be a Fortune 1000 company. You need to be a Fortune 100 company. The average women just on the billionaires list, which I look at every single year, is about for every 20 businesses, you might have 1% of women, maybe a half a percent. And the first women you're going to start out with are Sam Walton's <laughs> girls. Okay. And so, so we need you to thrive. We need you to be at that next level. And, and when I talk about next level, I'm not just saying something fancy that, you know, what does that mean? When you're saying words, they mean something. At next level, if you study it out, it means more than before. It means uncommonly impressive, uncommonly good. How many of you want to be uncommonly impressive? Simone Biles does. She sure does. Steph Curry does. Yes, he does. Shaq isn't when it comes to shooting free throws and three pointers. But he is a, when he when he was in the NBA, if he was coming down that freight train, he would just take you out. So you have to decide in your industry, be the freight train, 
be the Simone Bile, be the Steph Curry. They have made up their minds. You make up your mind and you keep stepping, you keep walking and you have people like myself and Anita and this great team of working solution folks to help you just crush it, to be uncommonly impressive. When you are uncommonly impressive, you are setting yourself apart from all of your competitors. That's my passion. I have to give to my people. I have to see my brothers and sisters. We need you. I get in these coaching sessions and SBDC sessions, especially our, our young black men and our young black girls in their 20s and early 30s. You know what I tell them? We need you. We need you. And we need you not just to survive. We need you to thrive. We, we, we need to help them. It takes a village. We need to be that village for them. And we're that village for you. And be clear on funding that, that don't be afraid of funding. Don't be afraid of loans. Don't be afraid of getting lines of credit um, because strategically your business plan and all of the things that you're doing, the point of it is for you to create revenue, to operate your business in a way for you to create revenue. Be careful. You're not just looking at what you have or don't have right now. The point of lending is for you to create and generate revenue so you can pay your resources back, pay that loan back. And if they're giving it to you, they have confidence that you can create and generate revenue to pay them back. They're not just looking at what you don't have. They realize that you don't have what you need, but if we give them this boost, they can generate revenue. So when you get that money, you get to work and you work it. You know, we've got a lot of sisters out there and we need you to be uncommonly impressive. You know, I want to stay right there. I was at one of your uh, presentations and of course, you know, after Margaret presents, she's presenting again because everybody wants to come up to her and you know, and, and talk, it, it, you're just inspired to do that. And I overhear you say um, about having a coach. And I'm thinking, why does someone who travels um, and does what you do nationally and internationally, why do you need a coach? And Margaret kind of cut me off. She was sweet. She cut me off. She said, oh, I have two of them. And, I, and, and, and it just astounded me. And I asked her, why? And she said, because I'm, I'm trying to get to another level. And she recognized in order for that to happen for me, I need some help. I need someone who's on a higher stair to pull me up to where I'm not. Can you just talk about that just a little bit, Margaret, before we continue? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, right. I have two coaches, fantastic coaches. Um, Tim Story, who is amazing. If you follow Tim Story, you know he has done some great things. He's coaches to the stars, coaches to Oprah Winfrey, and just amazing, amazing and how he coaches. And then I've got Coach Michael Burt. And I actually met Coach Michael Burt through Tim Story because I followed Tim Story for years. And they were doing a collaborative conference together really inexpensive. And so when when Tim Story is up to something, I, I like to pick my head in the door and see what's going on. And so this really got my attention and they were doing some coaching. They were going to do this event and then you could move on to, to a coaching opportunity with them. And so that's what I did. I continue to stick with them and learn from them and, and they have seeded into my life. And, and so some of the things that they had us do, these were people, everyone who, who took this opportunity. And let, let me just be clear, you have to invest money in what you really want to do. Everyone's not going to give you a break. SBDC is fantastic. SCORE is fantastic. Women Business Center is fantastic. Veteran Business in, is fantastic. But you have to recognize, I spent double digits to, to get these guys as coaches. And by the way, I'm still paying it off. Okay. And so, but, but I have access, right? Why? Because I'm trying to go to a platform 
that they're on. Okay. And so going into this, there was just maybe out of out of their initial event, I would say maybe 18 to 22 people invested and they had different levels and they were not inexpensive. Okay. It was not inexpensive. And so investing in me is the best decision I could make for me. I cannot go to some place I've never been before without someone who's already there who can help cultivate help me package in the way that I need to, to get there. And I promise you, the first person, watch what I tell you, just watch. And I say this confidently, not arrogantly. Tim's story, he's gonna be the first to ask me to come on his platform. Why? Because I've spent enough time with him to know that he's waiting for me to do one thing and I'm working on it. And as soon as I have that book ready, watch. And I'm going to I'm going to be all over that. I'm going to say yes and amen and do my dance and go and present because I have something that I need that is in me that I need to give to the rest of the world. I have destiny. You have one life to live. You have one. This is not nine lives. You have one life to live. Steve Jobs says, I just want to make a ding on the universe. And I think that's great. I'm trying to do an all out symphony. You need to have an all out symphony on this planet. And when you leave, there is legacy for your children. There is legacy for your community. There is legacy throughout your, your state, your city. People should know who you are. You were born for greatness. No doubt about it. I don't care what people have said to you. I don't care what your family said to you. I don't care what teachers, instructors, high school teachers, people can say some really crazy things. You were born for greatness and no one can live your life better than you. I cannot, I can't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to live your life. And you are for someone and you are a solution for someone. You are an answer for someone. Well, Margaret, I just, I got, you know, I have another question for you, but for the woman who's hearing you now and she's saying, all right, Margaret, that sounds great. Maybe that's easy for you, but you know, I've, I've, I've had a few stumbles and bumbles and I got some dreams, but I can't really seem how to get, you know, I can't see how to get to them. How does one believe in themselves when sometimes we pick ourselves apart the most? How do you how do you get to that? Right, right. That's a really great question. And there's there's something that I call bend, bends in the road, the ups and downs, right? There's bends in the road. So when you go on a road trip, the road is not always smooth. I love straight shot. I love going on road trips and I love that long open road. But sometimes there's bends and there's there's workers working on the road. There's gravel on the road. There's narrow roads. You ever be on a road, you're so tight and you got you got mountains on both sides of you and you can't hardly breathe, you know, and, and you're just kind of in a tight place and you're like, I'll be glad when I get through this. You, that's life. And, and it's important for you to know and decide that how you think about yourself will limit or excel you depending on what you think, not what everyone else thinks. People can you know, send information your way and tell you what you're not, but you have to decide on who you are. And I don't get my information from other people to decide on who I am. Do I get information? Absolutely. Have I gone through hard stuff? It has been hard all the way. Every step of the way, it's hard. But I don't get my validation from people. I don't I don't wrestle myself down. I used to, but I don't wrestle myself down. And if, if I'm saying something about myself that doesn't line up with, and I said I'm a woman of faith, and it doesn't line up with what God is saying about me and what, what I believe that when I'm praying, and what he's saying, 
If it don't sound the same, I need to change what I'm saying about myself. You need to change what you're saying about yourself. You're wonderful. You're powerful. You're a power woman. You're, you're a power secret. Secret. You can do anything that you put your mind to. You were born for a purpose. Potent is a really important word. Potential comes from the word potent. And that word potent, it, they talk about babies. When babies are born, and they said there is a potent time for a baby. And that word potent, if you, if you search that word out, it talks about, it means influencer. So you got babies that have a set time when they are born from, from zero to in these formidable years that they say this is the potent time that they are, they are influencers and they're being influenced. You're an influencer. I'm telling you, take it from me, you were born for greatness. Decide on who you are. If you have to put up sticky notes on your bathroom window mirror to really undo some of the stinking thinking, we, we're going to go through challenges. We're going to go through hurdles. But that doesn't mean that you weren't born to be a champion. Remember I told you, I, 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 my, my college instructor that I was trying to get in, he wasn't even my instructor, I was trying to get in the class. He just ripped me up. I've been called everything. I've been called everything and all kinds of stuff. I'm going through all kinds of things. And you know what I did? And I get knocked down and I've, I've gotten dirty and stuff. And I have to get back up, brush myself off and keep on taking steps. Even if you don't believe it, keep on moving and taking steps forward. It's not easy. If you're saying, Coach Margaret, it's easy for you. No, it wasn't easy for me. I had a grandmother that I loved who told me that, I was not smart. I was stupid as a road lizard. I'm like, well, what is a road lizard? I don't even know what a road lizard is. And I love her. God rest her soul. She didn't know any better. You know, and it took me a long time to learn how smart I was. But I kept taking steps. I got a, I got a high school uh, transcript that I keep that is so bad. I was sleeping in classes. I was I was I was sleeping in math algebra classes until I thought it was a study hall. But I got an MBA with a 4.0. I got five degrees. I just kept taking steps and putting yourself around the right people and mentors that believe in you. You got to get away from people that don't have your best interest in mind. Yeah, but you were born for greatness. That doesn't change whether you believe it or not, but you were born for greatness. Thank you for that, Margaret. So for the woman who's who's um, on this webinar today, she really wants to start a business, but she, she's working. So uh, in light of our theme, what would cause, our theme, it's my business, what would cause someone secure in a nine to five, didn't say they have to like it, but they're secure in their nine to five, um, what would what would cause them to walk away from it all to launch out on their own? Um, it, it's kind of like um, setting sail into more unknowns than knowns. Right. If I were in that nine to five, if you're in that nine to five and that's you, start preparing now. You don't have to just step away. You can step away with a plan. Step away with a plan. You have a nine to five. I, I love getting clients that are that are working a day job because it's it's sustaining their livelihood. So we can get to work on in the evenings. Okay, when they can make time. So and, and I have time on Saturdays that I'll meet with clients for them to prepare to step away, to get the business plan done. Get the and, and let me just be clear, your first step in starting a business is not the business plan. It's the ideation, the concept, the idea assessing to see whether or not you have a business model, a viable business model, a viable business model. A business model is how a company makes money, not the business plan. The business model is the cornerstone of a business plan. The business plan is the roadmap. It is the the 
narrative and the articulation of how you're going to sustain and become a competitive advantage. Okay. But the ideation is step number one. Do you have an idea or concept that really is a viable business plan? You got to do that work. And then you got to do your business model. So in your business model canvas from there, and then you're, you're going into, you're preparing. So prepare, take the next two years and prepare. Don't step away. I hate my boss. Don't step away. Leverage it with a plan that you know you should always be planning for your future. There should always be a target ahead of you. Set smart goals. And so when you set smart goals, make them, make sure you're making them palatable. You know, you can do short-term goals, midterm goals, and long-term goals. So you got three months for short-term goals, midterm goals, you, you can get those done within three years, and long-term goals, three plus years or more. But when you're doing that, okay, you are preparing to step away. You're preparing to, to start a business with a better and stronger foundation, which means that and get you an SBDC advisor or mentors, 60%, those that have mentors and advisors and coaches in their businesses increase their success rate over 60% past that five-year mark, getting to that five-year five mark and past that five-year mark. So don't go it alone. Start making plans to make your exit. Utilize what you have right now to keep your sustainability. So many uh, business women and, 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 and you know, new entrepreneurs feel like they have to know everything, but you don't know everything. And you're talking about sources and... Um, the SBA, SBDC, um, can you just talk a little bit about what those organizations typically do to, to help small business owners? Right. You know, the resources that are out there, the Small Business Administration, who is the governing body over the Small Business Development Center program, it's a program, not an entity, business, the SCORE program, the Women in Business Center program, the Veteran Business program. These are programs to help you start a business, to help you grow a business, to help you scale a business. And you have, a, you have collective resources that can be your team to help you propel. And so then they have these partnerships with Working Solution and, and, and different types of, of financial resources, right? If, 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 you're, if you don't qualify for traditional lending, you got the CDFIs, you got Working Solutions, you got a NIDA right here that's ready to help you take those financial steps that you need. And so you want to make sure that, that you exhaust their support as much as possible. You want to exhaust um, the the benefit that they are to you. Sometimes we're paying for things that we don't need to. We're investing in things that we don't need to because we have a resource here. And I think the Small Business Development Center has been a fantastic value. I've been a, a director of one of the largest counties in uh, as an SBDC director. And so I'm, I'm I have five contracts with SBDCs because I'm working with different businesses and the inclusivity project program, if you're part of that. And, and they're just phenomenal. And be consistent. You know, show up regularly. And I know it gets tough. I know it gets tough. I get questions, Margaret, how do you how do you how do you do the work that you do every day and work on your business? I have to make time for it. I was I was doing some training earlier. I'm in a I'm in, I'm in three different um, certification trainings because I've got to keep adding value to Margaret. And I'm going someplace that I need to prepare for, right? And so you need to make sure that you're doing uh, what you need to do. Don't, don't meet with your advisors and then don't show up for six months, three months, because you're gonna, you know where you're going to start, where you left off. And so you want to make sure that you take these opportunities seriously. And by the way, 
for SBDCs, these programs are not just because you apply for them that they are automatic. You have to be approved to be in the program. Okay. And so if you are not approved, then so understand that it's a it's a it's a benefit in your taxpayers' dollars pays for it as well. Market, when we opened up, we talked a little bit about Black Business Month and the reason why uh, Fred Jordan started his business. And you touched on this a little bit. And I just want to talk about, you know, data shows that it's harder for Black women to start a business due to biases, discriminations, right. uh, sources, as well as high interest rates. As you travel across across the, the country, uh, being a formidable business coach, um, what are some common concerns you hear, if you can expound on this, common concerns you hear and advice given in response to those concerns and, and the data? For Black women, in terms of the challenges that we face, you know, it's no secret that, again, that Black women, business owners are underfunded. It's when it comes to VC capitals, they're underfunded. And that's why you're seeing VCs pop up that are owned by women that want to support black women in business, women of color. And and this is what we're seeing around the country. We're seeing that there's a need for access to capital and not just that, but there's a need for um, capacity, right? on the back end and how that business is going to be structured and really getting it off the ground. What type of business do you want to be? So you you really, we really need to address how do we help our black women in business who are starting business to really develop their infrastructure to a place where they can get the funding that they need. Maybe they get start engine funding, peer-to-peer -peer funding. Maybe it's a mix between CDFI funding and grant funding. You can get grant funding and leverage it against getting more funding, right? And so you have to really get, we have to really get creative. And I think on some personal sides of things for, especially for Black women, I see this more with our, our Black women in business, if they're married to a Black man, and the I, I've sat and, and have listened to the pain because sometimes our black men don't understand our desire to build business and a legacy business. And it takes time. And and so there's some back end struggles of show me the money. When are you gonna, you know, because they feel our, our black men feel like they're carrying the weight of the of the household. And so there, there's some real challenges on both sides, personal and professional. And if we can help resolve those issues in the home, because I've learned that if you have a lot of issues in the home or in your personal life, it is really difficult to focus on building a business. It really makes it difficult, but but we need funding, we need greater creativity in gaining access to capital for our Black women in business. And we need capacity building funding, just funding to build capacity on that back end. Like you will see it with nonprofits, block grants, right, can be used for building the infrastructure of a nonprofit. It says, okay, we're going to use it for this and we're going to help you build your team and build your programs and build, build, build. And so they need this type of funding. And we do see a little bit of that in the SBIR programs, the America's Seed Fund, but that's technology. And, and we definitely wanna see more black women in, it, in technology and women in technology just in general, but there's opportunities to get up to $2 million in funding, okay? And that will help you build infrastructure, help you get your tech project off the ground. And so if you're in the tech industry, the SBIR, the STTR programs are really great uh, opportunities to explore with your advisors, but we need a system of funding and resources that, that can really come in and undergird 
black women in business. They're, they they are they are truly even more than our black men in business the the underdog. You know they're they're grossly underserved in in a lot of different ways in finance and they have some brilliant brilliant there's a lot of brilliant ideas out there and they're brilliant companies and they just need support. We need to find a way of, of providing that support. Margaret, thank you for that. Uh, for those of you who have questions for Margaret before uh, we conclude, you can put them there in the chat, to chat, excuse me, and we'll try to address as many as we can. Margaret, you kind of talked a lot about yourself, um, but you didn't say everything. I just got a question for you by way of transparency. Can you share with us about your personal if I knew then what I know now moments? I'm sure you got a few. Can you share with us some of them? Absolutely. If I knew, if I hadn't believed the, the negative comments that were being poured into me as a young girl, if I had have known that it was not true, I would be so much further than I am today. I wish I had not believed people who said they loved me, people who from, from family members to high school instructors, I wish I had not believed the lie about who Margaret Jackson, Margaret Harris, my maiden name is Harris. I wish I hadn't believed them. I would be so much further along. Don't believe things about who someone says you are and what you can do, what you would never do. You'll never amount to this and you'll never do this and you're not smart enough and you're not smarter than your brother or sister. You're not this, you're not that. Go back and you've got instructors that, that pour, you know, gasoline on it, they gaslight those sorts of things, right? You go to school and, you know, we have neighborhoods and we don't have the best instructors and teachers and, and it impacts us. But I was fortunate where I had two teachers, one in high school and one in college, the one that let me into the class and a, a Jewish, a little Jewish teacher, Caucasian Jewish teacher, if I can say it that way, who saw something in me that I didn't see and told me that I could go to the number one junior college in the state of Illinois. And it just blew my mind. Sometimes we do our own damage in our own communities. You know, you, you, you forgot where you came from and, and old sayings and mothers and, you know, people, you know, when you go to those family reunions and you got the Medeas in the neighborhood and, Speaking things, you'll only get, as I was told, you'll only get as far as a white man will let you. I'm like, what? I quit trying to do anything. It took me, it took me several years. I, I heard this like when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. So it took me years to think that I could do anything. So why would it, why should I even try if I'm going to get roadblocked, right? That was my thinking. In the black community, a Medea who I love, you know, but I just thought it was right. But it's not right. It's all wrong. So if I knew then that it was all wrong, I would be so, so much further. I, I'm telling you, I, my symphony, you guys would be hearing my symphony today. And so I'm, I'm making my dings, but I'm still going after that symphony. So, so let me be the first to tell you, do not believe it. It is not true. Whatever it is, it's not true. It's just not true. Go big, go big on purpose, go big. You have nothing to lose to go big and live an uncommonly impressive life. Make a difference. That's big, uncommonly impressive. Thank you. Margaret, look, before we go any further, this is a chance for you to uh, free flow. I mean, if. If there's anything else um, you want to share with us, I don't see any questions yet in the chat. Anything that you haven't covered that you want to share with us? 
Um, and then uh, my last question for you will be uh, a way that we can reach out to you for some for some one on ones. But anything else you want to share prior to that? Sure, sure. I, I have a few things. Number one, redefine success. Redefine what success is. Success is not an event. It's a journey. And so my journey to getting my master's degree, my MBA, and by the way, I, I completed it in March 2022. So it, it hasn't been that, that long ago. But every success was every class I took, every paper I wrote. Every grade that I got, I was celebrating. Celebrate along the way. Success is not an event. My graduation was a culmination of all of the successes that took place to land me on that stage, to walk across that stage. So you have to understand what success really is. So make sure that everything that you complete, everything that you achieve, every necessary step, every requirement to bring it to its culmination, that process, success is a process. It is a journal. It's a, it's a journey, journey, excuse me. Um, you know, and then it will call for that event. It'll call for that celebratory moment, right? And so understand that you are in the process of success. So don't look at it says, oh, when I make that much money or when I get that and when I get, you are in the process every success. Every success, everything that you complete, number one. Number two, set SMART goals. You know, make sure that you not only set SMART goals over the next three months, here's, a, here's something I want you to do, set SMART goals for the next three months, and then make sure that for each goal, realistic goals, not overarching goals that, that it, you, you can get frustrated when you make goals and they're not realistic. Make them realistic and give them steps and then reward yourself at the end of those goals. Make sure you, you say, hey, you did really fantastic in this. You achieved this. I'm going to reward you. I have a, a, a client who, when I read her SMART goals and I gave her this project to do to set up her SMART goals, and she, as for each goal that she achieved, her rewards just got better and better. <laughs> so make sure your rewards are getting better and better. Number three, be uncommonly impressive. Be uncommonly impressive. You don't want just next level. You want more. You want to be uncommonly impressive. You want to be in the situation that is more successful than before. That's what next level means. More successful than before. Um, like I said, uh, uncommonly impressive, more better, more advanced, more good, if I can say it that way. Be uncommonly impressive. And that's a decision. Number four, keep a growth mindset. Keep learning, keep growing, keep going to your next level, okay? And number five, be a leader, champion leadership. Leadership is not you were born, um, you know, you hear comments like they're a natural born leader. Leadership is a skill. You develop it. We can have some qualities, and I believe that everyone's born with the capacity to lead, but don't develop it. Develop your leadership skills. Be fantastic in your leadership capabilities. Be a champion so you so you can have a team around you that you can pull the best out of them and they will work hard for you and they will help you move that business to the next level, your career to the next level, what you're trying to do. And then finally, develop character that can be trusted. Make sure that your character can be trusted. Because the character that can be trusted, the bank can lend to you. Come on, the five C's, right, Anita? Character is one of the five C's, right? Character, why can't can you pay your money back? Can you can you pay that loan back? So make sure you develop a character that can be trusted because your team will trust you, your colleagues will trust you, it will open doors for you, I promise you. And so those are the things that I that I would say. Um, my final thoughts in, in that regard. And then in regards to connecting with me, you certainly can connect with me on businessontheedge.biz. That's my website. If you go to book now, you click on book now, it'll give you some options on getting a one-on-one -on -one with me in, in some area. 
you would, it, it's an investment. And any of that investment, if you get into a coaching, a 10 week coaching program, it goes towards a coaching program as well. And we just launched, Anita, I didn't share this, but we just launched a Udemy Small Business Grant Readiness and Writing Intensive, and that's also on that page. And I would really encourage people to take that. We've got a discount offer on that right now, $20 off until the end of the month. And so I would recommend taking that Udemy, uh, Udemy course, Small Business Grant Readiness and Writing Intensive, and you can leverage that against loans and against getting other funding, Invest in yourself right now. That course is only like $54.99, $54.99 with this special offer going on. And with that being said, go create your symphony. I love that. I love, love, love creating your symphony. Redefine success. That success is not an event, but it's a journey. Yes. Celebrate along the way, man. We just got to give ourselves permission for even the little steps. Set smart goals. And I didn't even ask you, sometimes we can be in, com in competition with someone else, right? Who's not even on our journey. So why do that? Right. Be commonly impressive. Keep a growth mindset. Be a leader. Develop character um, that can be trusted. That's some good stuff, Margaret. We so appreciate you today. And, and I'm sure there's some questions out there. We're not going to let Margaret go without a few questions. Clara, who's been helping us today, you, you're doing so wonderfully. Are there any questions in the chat? Uh, yeah, I see the, some questions in the chat. I'd love to, to get to them. I think they're great questions from anonymous attendees. Fantastic. Starting a business can be overwhelming. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. What is necessary to start versus what can be added as the business grows? For example, building your brand. That is such a powerful, powerful question, whoever asked this. And so, first of all, uh, starting the business, as I said before, make sure you're going through the ideation. And developing your brand is an ongoing process. It's not Advertising, marketing, and branding are different components, but they work together. And building your brand is your way of saying over and over and over again what that brand is. We need to see it. In fact, I was talking to a client yesterday, and I was showing her that she really is the brand. I'm the brand. Business on the Edge is my radio show. But the brand is really Margaret Jackson. And so that's why people know Margaret Jackson, because I taught people when I started doing radio, what the brand was going to be. You know, I would go to events and I says, hi, I'm Margaret Jackson. I'm radio show personality for AM1220 KDOW business radio. Hi, I'm Margaret Jackson. And if you see any of our any of our digital products or anything like that, you're going to see number one small business radio personality. Why? Because we're the number one business and finance network in Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area, fourth largest um, in the fourth largest market, radio market in the nation. And we are a Bloomberg affiliated and Wall Street affiliated network. So we are a powerhouse. And so you have to know what is your brand and what do you want to communicate about that brand? Marketing really is the is the messaging, the information. Advertising is the vehicle, is the channel that you're using. And the branding is that continual message. Why do we know the Nike swoosh? Because they have shown it that swoosh for years. They don't even have to put Nike on it. And as soon as we see the swoosh, we're thinking, just do it, right? So you have to be consistent and you can't, what I find with small businesses is that they, they're they kind of all over the map. They, they, if something doesn't work, they don't, you have to have some stick to itness and you have to continue to share the same types of messaging. The American Marketing Association says that it takes now 12 to 18 interactions with your target market to think about doing business with you, which means that your social media, your digital cards, your LinkedIn, your online and offline approaches, that, that's important for you to be consistent with your messaging. So if your messaging, you have 15 different ways you're saying, no, decide on your core message, Decide on what you really want 
to be branded and keep telling them about it and how fantastic it is. And I am the best person to solve that problem for you. Okay, it's just how do you build your team? How do you know if someone is the right fit? Process, right? That's why we have them put in their application and you have to go through a hiring process. And sometimes there's no one on the planet that has not hired the wrong person. Just let's just get that out of the way. You're going to hire the wrong person sometimes. Okay. How do you build your team? One person at a time. One person at a time. And it might be part time. First of all, you're the team. If it's just you and you're the solopreneur, you're the team. You start with you and you start with a culture that you want to see in your company. I am careful not to bring people in on my team that that cannot appreciate the culture that I am bringing. We are all creative. We all have gifts and talents and I'm looking to help you get to your next level. What are you willing to do for your team to make sure that their dreams and visions will happen in their life? You have, you have I've seen business owners that won't pour into their team because they're afraid they're going to leave because they have their own dreams. I, I bring people in on my team knowing that they have dreams and want them to leave to go and soar. So you have to decide on what kind of leader you want to be. And then what is the name of your Udemy course again? It's Small Business Grant Readiness and Writing Intensive. Seven hours of intense writing, 18 downloadables, lifetime access. Um, you get a completion of certificate when you when you finish the course. It's, it's I, I'm telling you, I'm just picking apart how you can increase your hit rate when you're competing for grants, RFPs, government contracts, all of it is the same. And if you go through that contract, you're gonna compete, you're gonna pe compete higher than most people that are competing on contracts and grants and that sort of stuff. And then we have one last thing. Predatory business partnerships and offers a such big business. And yeah, th th this predatory, yeah, that's a society we live in right now is a real thing. So what advice do you have on vetting partnerships, collaborations, and people you work with to grow your business in order to minimize wasting time and money? Absolutely, Felicia, fantastic question. You have to, if someone's going to be a partner in your business, don't rush the process. Make sure that you are in, in meeting people and really understanding what their motives are you know, it's not like we don't have intuition, right? If, if you have some intuition or, or you, you meet someone, you're like, there's just something not quite right about them. Don't get in a contract with them. You're going to have contracts that you are going to get in with that are sharks. Just know that you're swimming with sharks. Don't bring partners into your team unless you understand their position. And if they're a shark, you need to know that you're dealing with a shark or you're dealing with someone who is not really, but, and I want to be clear on this because you can benefit from each other anyway. Okay. And this is something that our black community hasn't really learned how to work in, in situations that I have to like everyone or I have to agree with whoever. No. You have people, our, our Caucasian counterparts, Asian counterparts, and, and I would even say Indian uh, world really understands how to work together and not necessarily agree with their practices or policies and things like that. Can you come together on a project, achieve it and benefit and go your separate ways? It's the bottom line. Can you do that? And we have to learn how to navigate those waters a lot better um, because that's how we're going to build and develop business and become Fortune 1000 companies. You don't have to be a shark that, that is devouring everyone. You can be a shark and making really smart decisions. So you want to make sure that you are taking your time, vetting them. What kind of collaboration? Is it a win-win collaboration? Like Richard Parsons, the first Black man to become the a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, he says, when I do a deal, I don't want it to be win-lose and I don't want it to be lose-win. I want it to be a win-win. 
can you create a win-win deal? And are they willing to, to have that deal? If so, then likely you're, you're swimming in good waters. I hope that helps you, Felicia. Wonderful. We don't want to leave. We do, we have five more minutes. If anybody has one more question, you, you, you can tell Margaret is just loaded. She just pours out. And we so appreciate you for that. One more question. And there's not, pardon me for saying this, there's no dumb question. A question is a question. And you're Correct. Going to answer. Um, Correct. And, and while we're waiting, that, I'm, I'm, while we're waiting on that, tune into my radio show. And I'm going to tell you why, because there's always great information. And I interviewed someone who's been wanting to be on my show for years, Bob Tede. And you can find him on LinkedIn and has written several books on leading with questions. And Anita, you said this earlier, small businesses think they need to know all of the questions. No, all of the answers. No, no. You ask questions, leading with questions. And I have the book here in my office. It's sitting on my, my bookshelf. Leading with questions and questions that leaders wish they had asked, like on the Titanic. They were thinking it. It didn't ask it. Challenger blowing up. There were problems with Challenger and they, they knew that there were some issues with its, its coil or their rings, their O-rings. And so no one pushed the envelope and it could have saved lives. So the questions that you have, there are no, someone else is thinking it. Don't feel like you are, and, and you can poise questions like, let me ask you a question. Can you expound on that? And what else? Can you give me a little bit more information? This is what I think that you're saying. I'm not sure that I have ever heard that before. Can you can you give me a little bit more information? So there, there's always a, a real eloquent way of just saying, I don't know. And you know what people feel good about is being asked questions because it makes them feel really smart. And, you know, and then when when people ask you questions, like it feels good to give a response. So make sure that you are CEOs. You should be loaded with questions. I'm loaded with questions. I can't wait to get in front of people that I can ask questions. Tim Story, I'm asking questions. Coach Bird, I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. I'm asking my clients questions. I, I load my, my clients down with questions. You know why? Because the answers that they give me helps me help them better. Right? I don't come in and just says, oh, I just think I know everything that's going to give you all that you need to know. And it's a wonder. No. I don't know anything about your business. I'll tell them I am not a unicorn. I do not know it all. So I'm going to ask you some questions and I start picking apart their business, not in a, in a negative way. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to get understanding. I start asking them things about their personal life and how does the work-life balance and all of that happens. Uh, is there something, what are their, what are their long-term and short-term goals? Because it's going to help me help them better. So ask the questions that's swimming around in your hearts and in your heads. And, and by the way, you have my email and everything. I think it's on here on the edge at businessontheedge.biz. Email me questions. I will respond to you. Okay. And make sure that I that I give you some feedback on, on what you're asking. And don't go it alone. And don't build a solopreneur business. Build a business system. It's a difference. Solopreneurs. You only have 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. There's only so much you can do. Build towards a business system. There's four ways of working in our world. You've got employment, right? We've got self-employment. We've got business system. Creating income is probably the better way of saying it. Building a business system and investing. And so when you get to the place, that fourth one, where you can invest, build investments into your business, build investments into your life. So you can so you can give out and pour out more and do what CEOs do best. Be geniuses at what you're doing. Margaret, you we have two notes here. Monica says Monica wants to start a business, but she's not sure what type of business to start. And I'm sure that means she doesn't know where to start. And then Priscilla says as a business owner, she struggles with juggling multiple aspects of her business. She really loves multitasking but not sure if that's really healthy for growing a business. And those are two questions. Felicia said uh, what you shared was really helpful. 
I'm, gl I'm glad it was helpful, Felicia. Uh, Monica, I'm not what, oh, you're not sure what type of business to start. That's where the idea assessment comes in. That's where you get to explore. And there is a, make sure that you email me. I'm going to send you a link. And it is an article by Iowa State University on idea assessing and building and developing a business. It's the process. And so it allows you at no cost to kind of go through and the articles, maybe about a five minute, five to eight minute read, but it gives you all of the great outlines for you to think about what type of business do you want? What do you want to do? What do you have a passion for? Is it, should it be a sole proprietorship? Should it be a nonprofit? Should it be a C Corp? Should it be an LLC? And so you can begin exploring that. But I will tell you, Monica, that that business idea is in you and it's around you. And so you just need to start. That's the treasure that's in you. And so just go on the treasure hunt. Email me at on the edge at business on the edge dot B-I-Z. And I will send you that link so you can get started with an idea assessment and start asking questions and coming up with what you really want to do. Um, Priscilla, hi, Priscilla. As a business owner, I struggle with juggling multiple you know, as a business owner, it's not uncommon for us to wear different hats and different things that we're doing, but we don't necessarily, we don't really multitask. It's really the way that our brain works. And if, and if you look at those who, who study how our brains work, and I'm always interested in these sorts of things, is that we really just do one thing at a time. And so prioritizing what's most important is how you want to deal with Instead of juggling, prioritize and says, OK, what's most important for me to get to my goal? What is your end goal? Where, what are you trying to achieve? And then put that in perspective and everything else that can be put on the back burner, put it on the back burner and make sure that you are prioritizing so that way you are getting done what you need to get done. Because we literally, our brains do not allow us to multitask, even though we feel, because when because we're not focused on one thing at a time, right? we're, we're focused on one thing at a time is the way our brains work. And multitasking, our brain doesn't really work like that, even though we say we multitask. Um, and, and no, it's not a healthy way of growing a business long-term because long because growing a business and scaling a business is about methodical, strategic thinking and putting things in a, a, a plan and taking those steps and not just business plans. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a business owner, you're going to do all kinds of plans, strategic plans, data analytics, all kinds of things that's going to help you grow and scale. So trying to juggle different things and see what's going to stick. No, focus, prioritize, and know what that end goal is and get to work and achieve that and achieve the next one. And they're building blocks, right? They're going to build upon one thing upon another. And then you're going to find that you're going to have a lot more success. Otherwise, you're not going to have the level of success that you want if you keep kind of you know, pulling in different areas. You want to have some specific success. What is it? How much money do you want to make at the end of the year? How much revenue, for example? I want to make $250,000. So how do you do that? And what's going to help you do that? So you have to have a plan to do that, for example. Thank you, Priscilla, for that question. And thank you for joining us to, today as well, Priscilla. Uh, I, know, I know Priscilla is, as well. She's done some amazing things. And so uh, she is definitely uh, one to connect with. It's, we all need a coach. We all need a coach. And what I love that you said earlier, uh, Margaret, is that we need to invest in ourselves yes. because we're worth it. Absolutely. 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 I, I, I'm, I'm so committed to that truth right there. Absolutely. Margaret Jackson, highly sought after leader, radio personality and publisher of the Small Business Concierge magazine. You have really poured into us today and we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And listen, those of us who um, are part of this webinar today, I really hope that you reach out to Margaret, share her information, take a screenshot of this, um, pass it on. Margaret is the real deal. She is authentic as they come. 
and uh, you're always going to get genuineness from her market. We really salute you today. It is Black Business Month, and we're so happy to have you not only today, but at any time you have availability. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. with us. Thank and you, Anita, for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it very much. And if you're looking for funding, you have some questions, you can always uh, reach out to us at info at workingsolutions.org. As I said at the beginning, we've helped so many small business owners and we are here to help you info at workingsolutions.org or you can just go to workingsolutions.org to learn more about us, to get some history on us. Um, we're right there for you to know more about us. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Clara has been behind the scenes helping us. She is our marketing group guru. So what you see in terms of our flyers and what help have you, um, she is she is such a gift and a tremendous support. So Clara, thank you so much, my dear. And again, to all of you, have a wonderful rest of the day, Margaret. And to all of you, we bid you adieu.